Hey there, amazing, amazing friends. It is time for the Crazy Blessed Podcast. I am so excited, y'all. This is going to be so phenomenal because what we're going to be talking about is getting back to the real you. I'm going to show you in today's podcast what the real cause of all your stress and anxiety and toil and suffering. I'm going to show you the real reason you may be going through that. And believe me, it is it's probably not what you think. You're like, you know what? I'm going I'm going through all this because I I just don't have enough money to pay the bills. I'm going through all this because my marriage is suffering. Um, I'm having a hard time because my thyroid. I'm telling you right now, y'all, it ain't what you think. This is going to get real. It's going to get real and it's going to get real fast. Because what I'm going to show you is that you were born in a certain way. You were born in God's original design. Let me explain a little bit about this, okay? So, you excited about this? This is going to be so good. So, let me explain a little bit about this. You see, when Coke came out, like Coca-Cola, you know what I'm, you know what I'm talking about. Everyone ate crazy over it. Of course, it was laced with cocaine. But after that, okay, like <laughs> after all that, but everyone loved Coke. Everyone loved to have Coca-Cola, a nice cold bottle of Coca-Cola. And then they it tried to improve upon it. Well, first in the 80s, they made New Coke, which their stock dropped out the bottom, ruined it. People hated it. They're like, bring back the original Coke. So they did. And now they're still trying to improve on Coca-Cola. Coke Zero, Diet Coke, something, <laughs> something, because evidently the original wasn't good enough. But you know what? You are not a Coke Zero. You ain't no Diet Coke. You're not a new Coke. You were made in the original design. And we're going to talk about that. What is the original design? Where is the stress coming from? How can I stop this stress? And I, I can say right now that not just the stress and the anxiety and the depression and the exhaustion, but all the, the, physical, like the headaches, the, the, um, nervous stomach, like all of these symptoms that we have in life, you know, it goes back to getting out of that original design that God created us to live. So I'm telling you right now, if you have ever tried to fix yourself, just, just, you know, whether you're driving on the road or you're watching this live or, you know, listening to it at home, just give me a little head nod, head nod, okay? Give me a little head nod, not eggnog, head nod. And uh, just trying to fix things yourself, trying to solve the problem, trying to get a solution to something that you really couldn't find a solution for. And how many times has it spanked you in the butt? <laughs> how many times has your own clever solution and your own uh, great idea to fix a problem, how many times did you do something like that and it totally kicked you in the butt? And then you realize, oh, maybe I, maybe I don't have all the great ideas. <laughs> maybe I don't have what I need to solve this problem. You know, I know so many times, especially as a, as a mom of a lot of kids, I have seven kids. Well, seven kids by birth, I got eight kids. But coming up with solutions to like, to like solve some kind of problem. And I, and I would think for a moment, you know what? The kids are going to love this. This is going to be a, a great idea. We're going to have like family game night and we're going to play this kind of game and it's going to be awesome. And then it never goes over well, you know, it like totally flops and totally fails. And you're like, Oh, great. Like I thought it was going to be so awesome. And it turned out to be a total fiasco. So that's what happens a lot of times when we try to solve our own problems, we actually end up usually making things worse. It's when we can get wisdom from God and say, all right, God, you know, like my weight problem, like my, my, my diabetes, my, these stress headaches, our money problems, my marriage, Lord. Can we talk about that? Can I get your solution to this? And when we go to God, he's able to say, girl, 
I had the solution the whole time. I was just waiting on you to get tired of trying to figure it out and quit running in a circle chasing your tail and you finally came to me. You could have done this years ago. Well, you know what? We're going to do that today. We're going to get God's wisdom to solve whatever and I will clearly back this up. This is a guarantee. Whatever the problem is in your life, I absolutely 100% ironclad guarantee that God has the answer. So we're going to get that answer right now because uh, God created you, his original design for you. There was nothing lacking. There's nothing missing. There's nothing where God was like, oh, I didn't mean to make you like that. Oh, no. I didn't mean to make you with that crazy attention span. I didn't mean to give you that special needs kid or I, I didn't mean to make you so shy or you know what? God doesn't make mistakes. So when things happen in our lives that are frustrating and, and, and they bring about symptoms that we know, you know, something's not right in my life. Something's a little off kilter here. Something's, something's failing and God, I know you're faithful. So it must be something on my end. Well, yes, it, it is because God's proven faithful. He has the answers. His way is right. So if something's not going right, we can pretty much guarantee that we missed it on our end. God didn't miss it. We missed it on our end. So let me explain this. See, when God makes something, he makes it perfectly. It's, it is not it is not missing anything. Actually, the, the word shalom for peace, it actually means a lot more than peace. It means nothing broken, nothing out of place, nothing missing. Isn't that what peace really feels like? Like where nothing is missing. Everything's perfect. Everything's in place. Have, has your home ever been like that? Where you just know like, oh, it's all clean. It feels great. There's a nice energy. Everyone's happy. It's like, this is the best. Like I want my home to stay like this 24-7. It never does, but <laughs> wouldn't it be good if it did? Like we know there's nothing missing. All my bills are paid. My house is clean. Oh, this is awesome. Well, God originally designed you in that way. Nothing missing, nothing broken, nothing out of place, but something happens. And as we grow older, as we have more experiences, as we have more of man's way of doing things infiltrate our life, sometimes we get a little off focus. We get a little out of our original design. We get a little bit Coke Zero, you know what I mean? See, let me explain it this way. God created food, right? He created perfect food. And then here comes man, and he tries to improve upon the food, and look what happens. I mean, can you honestly say that fast food has helped our bodies or hurt our bodies? Can you say that processed foods have helped our bodies or hurt our bodies? I mean, we can go back to God's original design and be like, you know what, God, you had it right the first time. Like an apple off a tree is way better than a box of Apple Jacks. Like I have to admit, God, you had it right the first time. But man tries to improve upon these things and really ends up messing it up. That's what perversion actually means. I know people, when you say perversion, they immediately think, ah, oh, what a weird perv. You know, they just get these really weird thoughts in their head. But let me, let me actually give you the definition of perversion. Perversion is the alteration. Listen to this. This is awesome. Of something from its original course, meaning or state to a distortion or corruption of what was first intended. That's the definition of perversion. So when God made you, he made you perfect. You were the, you were the original design, nothing missing, nothing broken. As a matter of fact, um, the same thing happens with sex. God creates sex. It's awesome. It's beautiful. It's amazing. Here comes man, totally perverts it totally perverts it. He takes it out of the covenant of marriage. It's distorted. It becomes ugly. It becomes damaging and destructive, right? So man tries to improve upon it, ends up messing it up, but we've got to get back to our original design. Let me read to you Genesis 1, 26 through 31. And you know the Genesis story, but I need to show you, I'm going to show you something that's hidden in here. 
that you may not realize directly applies to you and every problem that you may be experiencing today. God said, let us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, make mankind in our image. What, what image did he make you? In his image. Is anything missing or broken or, or out of place with God? No, it's all perfect. He made you perfect in his image. After our likeness, and let them have complete authority over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, the tame beasts, and over all the earth, and over everything that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. In the image and likeness of God, he created them, him. Male and female, he created them. And God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, using all its vast resources in the service of God and man. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over every living creature that moves upon the earth. This is going to all come together. And God said, see, I've given you every plant yielding seed that is on the face of all land and every tree with seed and its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to all the animals on the earth and to every bird of the air and to everything that creeps on the ground, to everything to which there is breath of life, I've given every green plant for food. And it was so. Now listen to this. So God made you, right? God made you. Then he looked at you and God saw everything he made and behold, it was very good, suitable, pleasant, and he approved it completely. And there was evening, there was morning, a sixth day. Check it out, y'all. He created you. Then he looked at you and he said, Ah, oh, yeah, that is some good stuff right there. He stamped that approval sticker on you, sent you to earth and said, Yes, you are blessed you are, um, and it says right here that God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth. God's blessing, when he blessed us, he put, he not, he not only created us in his image, but then he blessed us and gave us his creative power to operate on this earth. That's why he said, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it, have dominion. He wouldn't tell us to multiply, subdue and have dominion if he didn't give us power to do that. And that was what the blessing is. He empowered us to prosper. But what happens? What happened with that whole plan? Why do we come here and all and, and struggle? And why do we have stress? Well, I'm telling you, we got out of the original design. We totally did. We got out of the original design. It was perverted. God made you perfect. He made you and said, you're good. I approve you completely. But then as usual, when we come from our heavenly kingdom with that power, we can become like the world we're born into. And all of a sudden, we try to improve upon ourselves and we try to change and we get and we get out of our original design. It could be you went through trauma as a child and it really perverted your view of the world. It, it could be that you experienced um, really bad tradition, like really bad messages that came at you. You had to go through stuff that children shouldn't have to go through. You go went through stuff that teenagers, that no one should ever have to go through. And all of a sudden it twisted and warped your perception of who God is and who you are and what you were created here to do. And all of a sudden there's cynicism builds up, bitterness, anger, anxiety, and then on down the line. The stress, the headaches, the stomach aches, the skin problems. I mean, we go on and on and on. The weight gain. I mean, it all stems from when we get out of our original design. So I want to say something, and I just want you to like listen with open ears, okay? And don't judge immediately. I really want you to listen for a moment of what I'm telling you. It's these four words. Pain comes from perversion. Pain comes from perversion. Now, I want you to understand again, if you're just tuning in, what perversion means. It's when something is altered from its original design. That is the definition of perversion. 
and pain. And I'm talking all pain. Like you're, you've probably, you probably know very well what I'm talking about. And it could be like the pain in your bones. It could be the pain in your joints. It could be the pain in your, in your emotions. It could be the, it could be the pain you're carrying around in your body, in your mind, in your soul. It can be all of this pain and more, but all pain comes from perversion. And let me show you how Jesus handled this, okay? Jesus is so cool. Man, he always knows how to handle it. He is so awesome. So a lot of you probably already know the story about when Jesus was preaching and they lowered a man down through the roof, right? <laughs> it's really a cool story. But let me read that to you. Luke 5, and I'm going to start verse 17. Now it happened on a certain day as he was teaching that there were Pharisees and teachers of the law sitting by who had come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, and Jerusalem, and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Then behold, men brought on a bed a man who was paralyzed, whom they sought to bring in and lay before him. And when they could not find how they might bring him in because of the crowd, okay, they couldn't get the guy into the building, right? They went up on the housetop and led him down with his bed through the tiling into the mist before Jesus. When he saw their faith, he said, what did, what did he see? Did it say when he saw them lowering the man through the ceiling? No. Jesus said, I mean, I mean, the Bible says when he saw their faith, when he saw their faith is something you can see. You can see it in a person. You can feel it in a person. It's tangible, real faith is operative faith, is tangible, it's a tool that is used for manifestation. And these people were using their tool. They were like, oh, crowd don't stop me. I'll just climb on the house. Doesn't, doesn't bother me. I'll just do what I got to do to get where I got to go because today I got to get to Jesus. And they didn't stop in anything to get to him. And the scribes, oh, oh, and when he saw their faith, he said to him, man, your sins are forgiven you. I want you to think for a second. Well, actually, let me read the rest of this. And then I want to ask you a question. It's a very important question. Okay. And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason saying, who is this who speaks blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? But when Jesus perceived their thoughts, he answered and said to them, why are you reasoning in your hearts? Which is easier to say your sins are forgiven you or to say rise up and walk? But that you may know that the son of man has power on earth to forgive sins. He said to the man who was paralyzed, I say to you, arise, take up your bed and go to your house. Immediately he rose up before them, took up what he had been lying on and departed to his own house, glorifying God. And they were all amazed and they glorified God and were filled with fear saying, we have seen strange things today. You ready to see some strange things in your life? Then get back to the original design. Like good strange. Like stranger things than any television show. Like good, good, strange things. Like how is this happening in my life? How is this money flowing in? How am I not feeling the pain anymore? How am I able to sing and laugh again? How am I able to clean up my house like a boss? How am I able to rise up early in the morning and be excited about my day? That those For some people, those are pretty strange things. But God wants to show up and do that in your life. And let me tell you something. The reason I'm sharing this story with you is Jesus always does things in perfect order. Always. So what he did, he didn't first say, dude, hey, get up. I'll heal your legs. Like, you don't have to be lame anymore. You can go walk, dance, go run that marathon, whatever you want to do. Jesus knew that pain comes from perversion. He knew that the physical symptoms in that man's life was not stemming from his legs. It was stemming from his soul. So the first thing he said was, dude, your sins are forgiven. Like, let's get back to your original design. Your sins are forgiven. Jesus, God calls you his righteousness. God, God sings and dances over you. God rejoices over you. He looks at you and says, you're good. You are not missing anything. You are perfect in my sight. I don't care what you've been through. I don't care 
He does care. But what I'm saying, he doesn't look at what you've been through to judge you. He doesn't look at the pain that you created. He doesn't look at the experiences that, that you had. He doesn't look at the wretched things you may have done in life and see that. He doesn't. He sees beyond all that because he sees through the blood of his son, Jesus. And he sees you as perfect and holy and righteous and pure. Girl, it doesn't matter what you did because God has declared you pure and holy. That's how he sees you. But Jesus had to do this the right way. He said, first, before we can deal with your knees, we got to deal with your head. And first off, cheer up, baby. That's even what he says. There's another version of the story that's in Matthew. It says, Behold, they brought to him a man sick of the palsy, lying on a bed. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said to the sick of the palsy, Son, be of good cheer. Thy sins are forgiven. And in our language, we'd be like, Cheer up, bro. Cheer up. Like, put a smile on your face. It's all good. I don't care if you're laying down with palsy in the bed because this is where it stops because we're going to get in your head right now and we're going to heal what's broken in your soul so we can heal what's broken in your body. How beautiful is that, y'all? How amazing is our Jesus? This is how he does things. He's like, we're going to heal your perception of yourself because you have seen yourself as a sick broke, broken person. You see yourself as palsy. You see that bed not as a place to lie on and rest, but as a prison that you live in every day. He's like, we're going to change that right now. We're going to get you back to your original design of being pure and holy and sinless. You are the righteousness. That's what he declared over that man. He's like, we got to deal with first things first. First, like, just get you back to the way you were born to be. You were born to be in the image of God operating as he operates. And we get messed up, man. We get messed up along the road. But Jesus is like, not on my watch. We're going to fix that right now. I said, come on through the roof. Come on. It was so funny, y'all. We've got some people who are working on our roof, putting a new roof on our house. And in my daughter's bathroom, they have a skylight. Are you ready for this? So my girls were in their, in their bedroom. This is so funny. <laughs> and there are a bunch of guys on the roof hammering and hammering and hammering and hammering. And, <laughs> and they took off the skylight. All of a sudden, they could hear him taking stuff off, and you could hear him, like, around the bathroom and stuff, like, like shuffling around on the ceiling, opened up the skylight, and the girls, like, screamed and tore out of their room and ran downstairs. I was laughing my butt off. I was like, what do you think they were going to do? Come through the ceiling like the, like the, like the palsy man in Jesus' house? You thought they were going to, like, tear through the ceiling, lower him down? You could have just said, cheer up. Your sins are forgiven, and then ran off. Like... <laughs> I said that was awesome. It was awesome. I laughed so hard at that. But this is like, Jesus was laughing. He didn't care about the torn up ceiling. He didn't care about the room. He says, dude, cheer up, man. Today is the day of salvation. Today is the day when you're not only going to get your legs back, but you're going to get your head back because your sins are forgiven, because you're pure and you're holy. Get back to the way you were born to be. Get back to your original design, the way God created you. Know who you are in him. Know that you are blameless. Know that you are his righteousness. Know that he created you to reign as he reigns, to rule as he rules, to operate as he operates, to create as he creates. Know your power. Know your identity. And then the healing can pour from that. And that's the strange thing. Like, you ready to see some strange things? That's how we do it. When you get your identity right, when you realize what you were born to be, what you were grafted from, all of a sudden it changes everything. Stress can't even find a way into your life when you know, when you know that you know who you really are and who you were born to be. And when you know that, you are going to be blessed like crazy. 
And I finished in 30 minutes, but you know I only got a little bit of my notes, guys. <laughs> I got so much more. I got so much more. So yes, 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 yes. We are back. We are back doing the crazy blessed Bible study. So I'm so excited. We're going to spread the word. We're going to get people on here. We're going to get people saved. We're going to get people healed. We're going to get people whole. We're going to get people plugged into God's word and plugged into God's power and reigning and ruling in their life. Who's excited about that? Who's excited about what we're going to do together on this podcast? Yeah, it's going to get real, y'all. <laughs> so I am so stinking excited. Awesome. I'm so excited you're here. Praise God. Praise God. Mm, yes. I'm so excited. Y'all, I'm like partially like I'm doing this for you, but I'm also doing it for me because sometimes you just got to preach to yourself. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to preach to yourself. So we're going to spread the word. We're going back here on Tuesday. Guess what I did? Guess what I did today? I didn't set up the microphone. So out of practice, but it's all right. Woohoo! That's right, Regina. <laughs> it's back. Crazy Blessed Podcast. Yes, we're back and we're going to go strong. We are going to torment the devil. Who is down with that? Who is down with tormenting the devil and squashing his sorry butt underneath our feet? You ready for that? Put on those shoes of the gospel of peace because we're going to stomp, stomp down the gates of hell. That's right. It says not even the gates of hell will prevail against us. You know what that means? Is that you know, we don't need to be cowering. We need to be rising up and we need to storm the gates of hell and be reaching in there and grabbing people out. Say, not today, Satan. Not on my watch. Not in this person's life. Mm -mm. So that's what we're doing here. That's what we're doing here. We are back to Tuesday. Crazy blessed. Let me pray over you. Father God, thank you so much for these amazing, amazing people that you have made in your image. God, you made no mistake. You have a design for them, Father, that is good and pleasing and perfect, leading to abundance, Father God, leading to power and authority. Father, I tremble right now at the power you poured into them, Father, to reign as you reign and to stomp all over this globe and power to take back the life that they were created for. Father, to take back their children in the name of Jesus. There is, there's a girl who is going astray. Mama, you are so worried about her. Stop. You don't need to worry about her anymore. God has got her in the name of Jesus. We call her back into the kingdom of God. Father, speak to her right now in the name of Jesus. Speak to her heart. Father, cause repentance right now. Conviction in Jesus' name. Tender, tender repentance, Father. Bring her back. We thank you, Father. That's done, girl. Mama, I want you to rejoice about that. That is amazing. She is coming back in Jesus' name. There's skin disorder. There's rashes. There's skin disorder. You can't stop scratching. We speak healing over that right now in Jesus' name. Go away, rash. You can't stay on this body that is pure and holy. She is a pure and holy sacrifice. Your body is. So speak to that rash. Tell it it has to go in the name of Jesus. Diabetes, you don't have room in that body. It says in the word of God that Jesus is the name above all names. We name you diabetes and we say bow right now under the authority of Jesus Christ. You have no power in this body. Claim it right now in Jesus' name. It has no power over you. Stand in your healing. Receive your healing in Jesus' name. I believe it. This is the day. Ah, Today's the day for those crazy things to start happening in your life. I love you guys. I believe this. Yes, yes, yes. She is coming back right now in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Yes, receive it, Gina. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. So good. So good. I love this time with you. I love it. I love it. You know, you know me and you guys, you know us. We could go, we could go till 2 a.m. We'd be preaching. We'd be bringing holy fire all over the place, having souls saved. That's what we're going to do. So excited. Yes. Yes, it is, Joni. Praise God. And if you just stumbled upon this and you're like, what is this whole thing with stress, anxiety, and I don't need God? Yeah, you do. Do you know right now, if you die, you're going to go to heaven? Do you know that? Beyond a shadow of a doubt, yes. I am so excited to see my Lord Jesus. I'm so excited. If you don't know right now, I want you to pray this with me. Father God, thank you 
for sending your son, Jesus, to die for my sins. I receive him now as my Lord and my Savior. I give my life to him. Thank you, Father, for forgiving my sins. Take my life. Do something amazing with it. Amen. Now you know. Now you know. Yeah, we could pull an all-nighter, all Victoria. We certainly could. <laughs> I love you guys so much. Well, I am going to go to bed. And, and news flash. What time is it? Hold on. Let me see what time it is. It is 9.34. So, uh, Mom Boot Camp 2.0. It closes in 20 six minutes, 26 minutes. Mom boot camp closes in 26 minutes, y'all, for our whole spring team. If you're ready for a change in your life, do not wait on this. Do not stall. Do not negotiate with yourself. Decide, you know what? It's time for my new life. I'm plugging in. You can go to mombootcamp.com. Easy peasy. You can leave it in the chat if you want to, but um, closes in 26 minutes. I'd love to be working with you for 30 days all through April. I love you guys so much. Mwah! Be blessed like crazy. Bye-bye.